Hey guys, Eddie here from Deline Property. Today I wanna to do another quick video and this video is all about showing you cash flow sheets and basically what property looks like when you are buying two different types of property. One property example we're gonna go through today is a uh, property that is about a 4.5% rental yield. The other example we're gonna to use today is a, a property that has about an 8% rental yield. So today, what I wanna do is share this video with you to really show people out there the difference in cash flow, positive gearing, negative gearing, neutral gearing, all that kind of stuff, as there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And really, I guess, educate and share my experience with building my own property portfolio to 16 properties by the time I was 27. And this cash flow sheet is basically an, a big Excel spreadsheet. So. There may be more thorough ones out there, there may be better ones out there, but this is ones that you know we're gonna use today. I'm gonna to show you the difference between a property that you buy for 400,000 and it rents out for about, you know, say 350 a week. So, you know, under a 5% yield. So that property could be in, you know, our regions of Sydney for 400K, um, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, whatever. But basically a lower, rental yield style properties around 400,000. And the other example is a uh, lower priced property, it might be around Adelaide, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Tasmania, wherever. And it has about an 8% rental return. So we're gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna share with you today the different uh, scenarios. So this one right here, which as an example, is the property that basically we've got a $400,000 purchase price up the top and a yield of 4.68% based off $360 per week. Right down over here is this is based off, this cash flow sheet's based off principal and interest repayments on a interest rate of 4.5%. So yeah, interest, a uh, principal and interest you know, and bear in mind, I've bought you know lots of properties. Most of my portfolio are on principal and interest. However, I still have a couple of some that are on interest only. And there's no right or wrong when you go to buy investment properties on interest only or principal and interest. But this scenario, I just basically want to show you, you know, the facts and figures and basically what it looks like because a lot of people they'll they're like, oh, what about principal and interest and all that other kind of stuff. So here's your pretty much cash flow based off in principal and interest. So. Going back to it again, estimated cash flow, it's basically broken down week, weekly, monthly, and annually. So cash estimated cash flow, estimated count, these are all your expenses basically. Everything in the red is all your expenses. Everything in the red is all your expenses. So you can quite clearly see the council rates, Strata fees, if a strata property, water rates, insurance, management fees, estimated repayments, um, estimated landlord insurance, totals, total amount, then income. So what the property could rent for, lower rent, higher rent, uh, weekly, monthly, annually, and then estimated cash flow before uh, tax benefits and depreciation. So this is including all the rates and all that other kind of stuff. So I should have took that out, but basically that's everything right there from uh, estimated expenses, council rates, water rates, management fees, insurance, right, and all that kind of stuff. So this property right here, we basically bought for, this property here we bought for as an example, someone would have bought 400,000 and it would be renting for 360 per week. So as you can see, this property right now would be negative geared before any depreciation and benefits and all that kind of stuff by $207 per week. So per month, someone is losing $900 per month in holding this property. And that's not even a bad rental return, 4.68%. That's not terrible. There's people out there that have bought that have, there's people out there, there's people out there that I've seen buy properties that have like a 1% rental return or 2% rental return. This has a 4.68% rental return, but quite clearly, 
quite uh, clearly, you can see they're losing ten thousand, almost eleven thousand dollars per year. They're losing at ten thousand, almost eleven thousand dollars per year in in gearing, in pot, in basically cash flow after your counts rates, after your water rates, after your all your other expenses. So that's one scenario. They're losing ten grand a year. If you buy if you buy something four hundred k and it rents out for three sixty. Off the top of my head, I know these kind of things down because I've been doing it for almost 10 years, but you're pretty much gonna lose 10 grand a year. So here's a, that's a great example of why 90% of people get stuck at two or three properties, or one. You know, 90% of people, uh, property investors in Australia have two properties. No one ever gets to six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 16, you know, we're, you know, we're, I'm up to 16 at the moment, but no, no one ever gets past usually two or three. That's one clear reason why. So cash flow. Obviously, there's other things you want to aim for. Growth. I love. You know, you have to buy properties that have growth potential. You want to buy properties below market value, all that kind of stuff. I've got to buy. I've got to. It's got to tick all those boxes. But this is your only cash flow expenses. So that's one example. Another example is this one. So this example right here. Is a property might be in Brisbane, Gold Coast, Adelaide, but it basically purchase price is two hundred thousand. It rents for three ten a week. It has an eight point zero six percent gross rental return. These are all the same cash flow, same estimated water rates, insurance, management fees, repayments, weekly, monthly, annually. Uh, income on this property is three ten per week. Uh, thirteen forty three per month, sixteen grand a year basically. So your entire expenses per year for holding this property is sixteen thousand seven hundred. Your income for the property sixteen thousand two hundred. So right off the bat, this is on principal and interest. Bear in mind, this property's got a very good rental return, and this is on a four point five percent interest rate. Right off the bat, you're, there's a massive difference. Like, so the other property was negative 10 grand or 11 grand a year. This is only negative $600 a year or $50 a month or $12 a week. I bought properties, majority of properties will be like this. 90% of the properties that, you know, if you're aiming to build a portfolio, they'll be still be negative a little bit from the get-go. Some might be positive, some might be neutral, some might be negative, but basically, if you, $12 a week to hold the property after all expenses, but that's not including your tax deductions and not including your depreciation, depending on what property and all that kind of stuff and what tax bracket you're in. But basically, that's, um, that's amazing. That's, that's a good, solid return. If all, you have to, all it takes is to put the rent up, all it takes is to put the rent up $20 and it's, you're in positive geared territory. So that's an example. You got the first one where you were negative $11,000 a year, which could be more. I've seen people that are negative like 50 grand a year or like $80,000 a year, just to holding one property, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is a property, I guess this video is out there to, I guess, show you and you know educate people and really provide as much value and content as possible. So you can kind of see what properties are gonna look like. And you know, if you, you start to realize over the years that if you buy a property and it has a 5% yield, you know, if interest rates are 4.5 or 4 or 5 or whatever it is, that it, it's ba you can basically calculate usually what expenses to hold a property is and what your cash flow is going to look like without even going to this extent. Nowadays, I buy properties, I don't even, you know, factor in all, you know, all those little small details. It's pretty much just the facts and figures and, you know, get simplified. But... These are the kind of things that in the initial stage when you're buying your first, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, you know, your fifth kind of property, you can use cash flow sheets like this to really examine things, look at things, and you know, it's important to make good, buy a good property, but you don't wanna let $5 a week, $10 a week, $20 a week hold you back because you know, there's a combination of things. Cash flow, buying below market value, buying in metro areas, you're gonna get growth. So. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like some more information or would actually like to look at this uh, cash flow sheet or get an actual copy sent to you, uh, get in contact with us, jump on the uh, website, say, hey, I would like a copy of the cash flow sheet and we'll email that to you as well. So 
you know, just hoping to provide as much value and content uh, for you guys. So thanks so much for watching and I look forward to chatting to you soon.